Hi, I'm Ivana Radivojevic and I'm from Serbia. I uh, finished my undergraduate in uh, Serbian chemical engineering and I'm working in Professor Drain's lab. I just graduated recently, like two months ago, from his lab and uh, I would actually like to show you what I would, one of my projects that I was working on that is about solar cells and uh, solar energy. Solar energy is a very hot topic and uh, there have been a lot of research done in trying to make uh, different kinds of solar cells that can be efficient to convert sunlight into electricity. So um, the type of the solar cells that uh, we were trying to work on in the lab are called dye sensitized solar cells and they are called the third generation solar cells. because they uh, use cheap materials and it's very um, cheap to produce them and when you manufacture the solar cells they are, there is no any toxic emission which is very uh, important. So they are becoming a little bit commercial so you can make, you can build a solar cell and put it on the backpack for example and it can collect so much light that it can power uh, or recharge the battery on your iPhone or uh, cell phone and so on. This is like a scheme of the dye sensitized solar cells and uh, very simply I'll explain you how it works and what we actually made in the lab as well. So we call them sandwich type solar cells and you have two electrodes that are see-through right and they're conductive they're like a glass electrodes so then you have a layer of semiconductors that electrons can uh, go through and on the top of that layer we put uh, the dye the dye molecule so when the light hits that solar cell right it can go through the conductive uh, see-through electrode and it can um, reach the dye so the electrons in the dye we call that get excited actually they start moving and they can go through the semiconductor to your battery or the external load and from there electrons can travel reach this electrolyte and go back to the dye so you make like a complete circuit of the electrons and you actually produce the electricity right so the important thing that we work in this lab is to find the dye they can absorb great part of the solar spectra and the dye has to also be also be uh, efficient to produce some electricity so the dyes that we use are porphyrins and phthalocyanins and as you can see here this is the porphyrin dye and you see that it's red that means that it absorbs in the blue part of the solar spectrum and then this is the phthalocyanin dye that is blue means it absorbs in the red part of the solar spectrum you can also try to mix these dyes and like cover the broader range of the solar spectrum to like absorb more more uh, more light cells that I that I show you before this is how they look uh, in the real life right so you have those transparent electrodes on both sides that the light can go through and inside you have this uh, spot that you can see that's the semiconductor titanium dioxide it's very well known actually you have it it's very cheap also we have it in the panes in the walls, in the toothpaste, I think, and so many different things. And uh, then this green shows our dye or blue, our dye of the phthalocyanin. 
And if you look at the other one, we can see that it's red because that's our dye, uh, the porphyrin dye. When you connect these electrodes to the battery, you can probably just power a, a <laughs> calculator. <laughs> So you can power a calculator uh, with that. And uh, another important thing about these dyes is that the porphyrin is found in chlorophylls in the plants of the leaf, and they absorb light pretty well, while the phthalocyanins are very interesting. They're synthetic dyes, but they are very cheap to make, and they are those that, for example, you can color your, your, your pants your genes usually they are, have the blue color of the thalocyanin. So we are still working on improving these solar cells, but uh, for now they're showing some promising results. My name is Matthew Giro and I work in Dr. Drain's lab and I do research with thalocyanins and solar cells. I graduated from the University of Southern California in 2007 and I'm in my third year here. The thalocyanins we use in these projects are all made from the same basic core platform where the periphery of the rings are substituted with long chain thiols to change the way that they absorb and interact with light. On the left shows the basic molecule that we start from and on the right is the electron acceptor, the modified pyridyl C60 which accepts the electrons. This image shows the individual light absorption properties of each of the modified thalocyanins. You can see that as you add more side chains to the central molecule, you start absorbing light more towards the red side of the spectrum. 